Hello and welcome back to Complex Analysis. And of course, before we start, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, in this part 14, I quickly want to explain how powers work in the complex numbers. Of course, powers like i to the power 4 you immediately understand. You just multiply with i and in summary 4 times. In general, if we have an integer as the exponent, then the base can be a complex number without a problem. This is simply because the complex numbers form a field. However, now we can exchange the roles and look at 4 to the power i. First, we simply don't know how we should calculate this number here. It simply cannot be written as such a multiplication here. However, of course, this should be a well-defined complex number. And in order to define it, we first should look how we do it in the real numbers. So how do we define a general power with real numbers? For this, the base we call a should be positive. Then for the exponent, maybe we first start with a rational number. So it's given by a fraction with two integers, m divided by n. And of course, at least for n, we should exclude 0. And now a to the power m over n can be seen as a multiplication as before. More precisely, we have a to the power 1 over n, which is the nth root of a. And then we have this root to the power m. So we have this positive number here, m times in the multiplication. Or in other words, the power with a rational exponent is well defined in this sense. And indeed, this is a completely natural definition. However, now we can use a very nice trick. Namely, we can use the exponential function exp and the logarithm. So we first put our positive number here into the logarithm and then the result into the exponential function. And now because the logarithm is the inverse of the exponential function, we don't change anything here. However, now you should know that the logarithm fulfills a very important law. Namely, log of x times y is equal to the sum of both logarithms. This is an identity you really should remember and it holds for the logarithm as a real function. And of course, this rule immediately follows from the fundamental multiplicative identity of the exponential function. And now it's not hard to see that we can use this fact here. Namely, the exponent m comes in front of the logarithm. So we have m times logarithm of a to the power 1 over n. So you see, to prove this, we just need to use this rule m minus 1 times. To say this in other words, inductively we have that the exponent here becomes a factor in front of the logarithm. Moreover, this whole argument also works when we have such a root involved. It just works the other way around, but then also inductively we can show that the exponent becomes a factor in front of the logarithm. And then you see, we simply get a very nice result. More concretely, we have the exponential function of m over n times the logarithm of our base a. So when we compare the left hand side with the right hand side, we recognize a very nice relation. Namely, the base goes into the logarithm and the exponent comes in front. And please note, this identity here holds for every rational number. And therefore, we can just extend the right hand side here to every irrational number as well. This means that we have a straightforward definition for a to the power x. It's just defined to be the exponential function of x times the logarithm of a. And of course, this definition of a power we can read for every real number x. In other words, with this definition, we just close the gaps in the real number line to get a continuous function. However, now you should see, if x is a complex number, this definition here should work as well. Therefore, we just use this for the power definition in C. The base a should still be a positive real number, like 4, 
but the exponent can be any complex number z. And then a to the power z is now well defined. It's simply the complex exponential function of z times the real logarithm of a. So in summary, you should remember, if the base is a positive real number, the exponent can be any complex number, and we don't have a problem with this definition. For example, you can take Euler's number e as the base, and then e to the power z is simply the exponential function. Hence, this explains why we have this short notation for the exponential function. Okay, now maybe this power here is not enough for you if you want a complex number in the base. However, in general, this will lead to problems. You see this because with this definition, we would need the complex logarithm now. And please recall, in the last video, we have learned that there are a lot of different definitions one can choose for the complex logarithm. And there we agreed that most of the time we take the principal value of the logarithm. And therefore it would make sense to also choose it for the power definition. However, then you know we are restricted to the plane with the slit. And we call this one d minus pi. So you know it's just the whole complex plane where the negative real number line and zero are excluded. And with this, we can say that for any exponent z, we can define a to the power z. And there, as before, we have the exponential function of z times, and now, the complex logarithm of a. And then, when we agree that we take the principal value of the logarithm function, then this power is well defined. However, then we should also speak of the principal value of the power function. Therefore, Please always keep in mind that such a power with two complex numbers involved could represent a lot of meaningful values. The name principal value now tells us that we pick exactly one of them and then we have a well-defined complex number here. This means that we can calculate with it. However, I can immediately warn you, you should be careful in such calculations. Picking a principal value has consequences for our calculation rules. For example, you might know a power rule. Namely, a to the power z1 times a to the power z2 should be a to the power z1 plus z2. And indeed, there the exponential function saves us, this still holds. Hence, this is a correct calculation rule you can use for the principal value of the power. However, another power rule where you have a to the power z1 to the power z2 does not hold in general anymore. More precisely, in general, this is not equal to a to the power z1 times z2. Therefore, you really should be careful when you calculate with complex powers in this sense. Of course, don't forget, for special cases we still have this power rule, for example, when we have integers as exponents. Nevertheless, you should be careful and not extend this to any complex numbers. Okay, then I think that's enough talking about the complex powers for the moment. With the next video, we will go deeper into the field of complex analysis. Therefore, I hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.